Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to show you how to make this really beautiful Christmas lantern. I just love how this has turned out. It is so nice and it's huge. It's six by six by nine, I believe. So I've made this one. I'm going to make another one with you and the two of them are going to sit by my sliding patio doors. And they, yeah, I put this one by there and it looked so nice and my husband really liked them too. So these hold these little battery operated lights and um, I'll turn the light off in a minute just so you can see. Ideally I want to get the flickering ones. These ones are just plain from Ikea but I am going to go and get the flickering ones. But basically if I hold it up there you can see inside and then on the back here is this opening where you can put your candles. So let's pop all three in. Now it's not quite dark outside, but even with this light, you can see just how much that lights up and it looks so good. And I think once I've got the flickering candles inside, it's gonna look so pretty. And you can just see it starts to bring out that beautiful detail in the vellum that I've used there as well. So let me just pop my light back on. Okay, so I just wanna stress again that this is battery operated candles only. Do not put a naked flame inside these. So if you're any um, you know minors watching this, any young children, go and ask mum and dad for some battery operated candles and then you can obviously use this. And they just look lovely during the day as well when the candles aren't lit. I think they're just gonna be, yeah, so, so pretty. Okay, so to make this one, let's just turn them off. So I've got everything here. I've done lots of pieces already. Don't need that, that's for something else. <laughs> I've got lots going on at the moment. Okay, so I have already created this beautiful like topper. So this is my decoration here. So all of this foliage dye kind of effect here is from the stamping up, this one here, uh, Tropical. So I just used this one and it's been brilliant for doing Christmas kind of wreath um, detail. So that's the one I've used there. You just, there's a frame behind, around it, but it's just the inside piece that I've used. Okay, so that piece I've got already and I've just put a lovely big ribbon bow on there. This ribbon was from the range, 12 meters, brilliant. And then I've just, with my hot glue, stuck three of the bells. You can hear them there. Okay, so for the base, you need a piece of cardstock that is 10 and 1 8th of an inch squared, okay. Then you need some vellum, so you're gonna need three pieces actually, I'm just about to say four, but your back one is not, yeah, just the four, um, three pieces of vellum, five and a half by five and a half. And again, I've got this really nice star detail. Now, I shared this vellum months ago. I found a pack of about this much. It was so thick, full of just beautiful different printed vellums, but there was no maker's name on it, so I was unable to share. And I did ask at that point if anybody recognised it, but to this day I think it's just something that's been maybe in someone's craft stash many, many years, and then they donated it to a charity shop, and I was lucky enough to grab it. So it's from there, but any beautiful vellum, and even plain vellum, will be nice as well. Okay, next you're going to need four pieces of six and a half by whatever your A4 length is. Now you can have 12 as well, but I've got A4 which is 11 and 3 quarters, 11 and 5 eighths, okay? So it's the default A4 size. So like I said, four pieces of six and a half by whatever length it is that you're using and I will talk you through that. So even if you've got 12, you can still use it. Okay. I think that's it. Oh, and this piece here. So there isn't much to it. It's just, um, it does use a bit more card. So this is a piece of 12 by half an inch and this is gonna be the handle on top. And you'll also need another piece of 12 by half an inch because I've just remembered to just decorate like this here, okay? So in terms of cardstock, you need a heavy weight. This is 300 GSM craft card. So if you want something to last, I mean, these will go in my big plastic storage tubs at the end of Christmas, and I will bring them out again next year, and they're solid. So um, if you're using anything, I'd say weaker than 250, um, weaker than 110 pound, I don't think it's gonna last you forever. I just, I don't know. I just don't think you need that real rigid cardstock for this one. Okay, so first of all, with our base, so you want to score, though all the four sides are the same, but you want to score at one inch and two inches, 
and then I've just got a piece of cardstock here that I use folded in half. Pop that in the top corner and then put your cardstock up to it. And then you want to score at 8 and 1 8 of an inch and 9 and 1 8 of an inch. Because remember this was 10 and 1 8 of an inch. So basically now you have 1 inch, 1 inch and then 1 inch and 1 inch. Rotate your cardstock and do 1, 2 and then again put your card in, pop your cardstock back up and score at 8 and 1 eighth of an inch and 9 and 1 eighth of an inch. Okay, then burnish all of those score lines. Okay, and you'll have this here. So now just pop that to one side because that's all ready. Okay, so you'll have four pieces of this 6.5 by whatever length it is that you're using. Along the 6.5 inch side, you want to score at 6. Okay, then rotate your cardstock so this half inch tab is facing the top and you want to score at 2 and four and a half okay now because some people might be using 12 inches some people might be using 11 and some people are using a4 what's best to do now is just rotate the whole thing around pop it in here and score at one inch okay that way it's easy for me to just teach you all no matter what length you're using all it will mean is some of you are going to have a different width between this score line and this score line okay then you want to pop it back into the original orientation, so along the six and a half inch side with the half inch tab on the right hand side. And you are going to score at one and a half inches just down to the first score line, then two inches down to the first score line, then four inches down to the first score line, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking like I'm about to carry on and tell you lots more. If I just bring it up there, there you go, you can see. So that was the one and a half, that was the two, and that was the four. Yeah. All right, so that is what you should have. So you're going to have that one, that one, that one, and the big one and a, um, six, and a, uh, six all the way down. And then you'll have that one, that one, and then this one inch one at the bottom. You need to do that on all four pieces. Now the next part, you one of the pieces you need to have as your kind of back, your, your kind of opening where you can pop your candles in. Now for that piece you need to choose whatever circle you want to go in there that's going to fit whatever candle it is that you're putting in there. You may not have candles, you might want to use some maybe fragrances or something inside like a, you know, pop puree or something like that. But the circle I'm using, the rough diameter is three and three quarters. Okay, now this is six and a half inches wide, and my big shot is only six, but if you just fold your tab under, it will not affect it. Okay, you can then just pop that under, pop your die on top, pop it on the plate. Let me just bring, bring it in here just so you know what I'm saying. So here's my plate here. If you've got the big shot plus, then you will have the A4 plate, so it won't matter. But you can see now, look, mine fits perfectly on my plate by folding that in. All right, so that's all you need to do there. Then, to so do that on one piece, then on the other pieces, you need to do a square die cut. So let me grab my ruler again. So my square is four and five eighths of an inch. Okay, you can see there, on that side there. And then we're gonna die cut this. Again, it's entirely up to you what size you want to do. I wouldn't go any bigger than that because it means this is gonna be thinner and that will make your whole kind of sides weaker. I've got a nice three quarters of an inch there on that side and then obviously round to the back, but across those two sides, it's an inch and a half there. So it's nice and strong. So I wouldn't go any bigger than that, but you can certainly go smaller if you need to. And then what you're gonna do is I would burnish the score line of that long one first. I wouldn't worry about the others because most of those are cut lines, okay? Like so, and then I've got my die here. Let's get rid of this scoreboard. Okay, and then you just wanna sit your die so it's nice and centered within this square here. So above the, so not, you know, ignore that one inch piece here. It's that score line you wanna be within that one and that score line there, and that's where you want your die to sit. So I'm just going to use some washi tape here because I don't want this moving. Okay, I'm happy with that. So let me just bring in my big shot. 
Okay, so I'm just going to sit that on there. It doesn't matter about the rest hanging out because I'm just going to reverse my plates. So pop that one in. Okay, so I've just reverse that one back. Take that out. Okay, so now I can just remove that, leave that to one side. And obviously it hasn't damaged my side tab there at all, but now I've got that nice window. Okay, so you need to do that on the other three pieces. So you will now have, I'm gonna go through all the cutting and a little bit more scoring in a second, but you should have three that will have these pieces. So there's my three, and then you'll have your one piece there with your back. Okay, then you'll have your vellum, which do your five and a half by five and a half. And I'm going to use some of my red tape, and you just want to go around the edges, okay, like so. I like using the red tape because it's just very, very strong and it sticks well to everything. So, wet glue will work, but I just prefer using the red tape when I'm making, especially when I'm making stuff that I, I like home decor pieces that I want to last obviously time and time again. So, okay, just take your backing off. And then I've got my one here, flip it over and just pop that over, making sure you kind of get an equal overhang on each of the sides. And again, just use your bone folder. And can you see, you really start to see the red tape coming through. You want that to become really dark and then you know that that red tape's stuck down. If it still looks quite pale and cloudy, then it's not stuck down properly. Okay, flip that over and there we go. So now you will have three of those. Next what we want to do is some cutting and then we will do some final scoring. So you just want to burnish these score lines here and then the ones at the very top we're going to just do a little bit of cutting. So you want to cut down, so you'll have your half inch tab here, oh, I've got mine on the left hand side. So you're going to cut all the way down that one and then all the way across, and we're going to remove whoop, remove that piece. I'm trying to take out the score line, like so. Okay, so that piece has been removed, and you can still see my half inch tab. Then you've got two score lines. You've got this one, and then this one, the outer one. So this one here, this is the next one we're going to cut down, because this is actually going to be a little tab for us to be able to connect the very top of the lantern. Okay, and then just cut into it like that and just burnish it. You can see what I've done there. So now we've got that. If you just take a little wedge off, again, just so you're forming that tab. There we go. So that's what you should have. Okay, next we need to do a little bit of scoring. Remember, you're going to do all of this on all of those three pieces that you've got. So now I'm just going to grab my metal ruler keeping it upside down like this. You're gonna score, so you've got this square. If I just fold the tab in, you can just see the square there. From the bottom, or in, well, it's the top, the top left and right of this square, you're gonna score down to the top left and right of, again, ignore the tab, fold the tab in, fold the tab in there. You're just gonna score from the top left to the bottom left. I guess, top left, it depends, it's upside down, but you know what I mean. You're going from here to here. So if I just grab my stylus. Like so, you can just see that score line. So again, and then on this side, pop your stylus down first and then the ruler. Like so. Okay, so then you can just burnish those ones and just fold them down. Like so. Alright, and do that on the other three pieces. So now, um, oh no, you need to cut down that bit. It's okay. So this bit here, actually, sorry, you want to. Oh yeah, because you're sticking that bit. Silly me. You're going to remove that piece as well. So just come into that a bit more there. There we go. So that's how it should now look. So you're just cutting down, keeping that tab there, and I'm actually just going to take a little wedge 
off of that one and off of the bottom there. All right, so that is what you should have. So now I've got my three pieces. One, two, three. Okay, and then that back piece there. Leave those now to one side and let's go back to our base, which we've got here and we burnished all of our score lines. So now all we're doing is making a reinforced tray really. So again, if you, you're familiar with the reinforcements, then you'll know what to do. So start from any side facing you, it doesn't matter which one. And basically you just want to cut down past that first score line down to the second one here. And then again, cut all the way down like so. So you've got these two. Rotate it and remove those two and then remove that one. So now you're just left with this. And then just tidy up all those sides. So I've just taken a wedge off of there. Then I'm going to take a little wedge off of there and a wedge off of that one. Okay, so that's what you should have. And then you want to do the same again. So you've got the four squares, you're just cutting down the score lines through both of them, like so. Turn it on its side, remove the outer two, and then remove that one. And then again, just tidy up all of the sides, like so. Then rotate the whole thing, so that's now facing away from you, and repeat exactly the same again. Okay, so that is what you should have for your base. Then we just need to stick it together, so I've just got some of my wet glue here and with it facing, so that's the inside, you want to flip it over so you've got the outside and you're going to pop glue on these tabs here. So, And then you're going to bring it down and bring up a side. And just stick that down. Okay, then go around to the next one again, pop glue on the outside, bring the tab down and bring up side there and just repeat that on all of your corners just a quick one as well when you do your corners because we've got what we've made going inside this so all of this goes inside this kind of tray if you come in too much so when I fold that in if I bring that down too much and see then that's kind of overhanging like so you won't get that in there so you have to make sure that this is completely lined up and it's a perfect right angle. If you've gone in a bit or even too loose so you haven't stuck this bit right up to the edge there, that piece that we're going to stick in at the end won't kind of sit perfectly and um, it's the same with um, when you kind of make drawers and stuff like that. You know I read sometimes people saying oh theirs didn't quite fit or theirs was too loose. It's more than likely because you've done this and not realised so yeah just this is I always say kind of spend time with this so you can see again I'm going in and getting that perfectly lined up there okay so that's that bit done now because it's reinforced we've got all these pieces hanging so what you want to do oh, don't want that bit is just inside is just pop some glue I never put a lot just enough for it to kind of tack in place see there fold that one over pop it on its side and then just kind of re-burnish the score line and spread out that glue like so and see how nice and straight that is and you've got those really good right angles so again just do that on all of your sides okay so now I've got that really nice tray which is not much at the minute but once everything else has been put into it it will strengthen as well so pop that to one side and now we'll go back to these pieces and you want to put all of your sides together so you're going to have Two like that and oh well it doesn't actually it makes no difference whatsoever <laughs> ignore me right let's get these stuck down so you can use double-sided tape if you want but I've got my wet glue here so I'm just going to continue using this so just cover your tab like so and then I'm going to grab this one here and you just want to line up your one inch score line at the bottom and then the rest should all marry up nicely. And just fold it onto, you know, a corner, like, you know, a right angle, just so you can see, because that's how it's obviously going to look. And if I just flip it over and just use my bone folder there, squeezing out any glue, just make sure you get a really nice seal. 
one. Okay, so that's the first one done. Then go along to the next one. And get another one. And again, line up my half inch. And then the rest will all meet up nicely. Flip it over. And just do that until you've stuck them all down. Okay, so that's them all together. Then if you fold this one over and that one, can you see they will perfectly sit over the top. It's the same as doing a gift bag, gift box, it's just we've, you know, it's a different shape. So again, I'm just going to pop my glue on that tab and stick that down. Okay, so now you will have what is starting to resemble a lantern. But now we need to do the tops. So every one of these kind of triangles here is going to go inside, inwards, okay? And it's going to stick together, if that will on its side. It's going to stick, <laughs> it does work, like so. Okay, in fact, yeah, fold it flat like that, it's much easier. Fold them in and then they're going to stick together. So if you just open up one, and again, add some glue, like so. Fold it in, and fold the whole thing flat. Again, this is when you know that you've done your score lines and everything correctly because it will lie completely flush. Can you see nothing's kind of coming out the side there? You can't see any overhang or anything. So just, and I'm just using my bone folder there. And again, this is why I love using craft card because it's so forgiving. It really is great. So now when you fold that up, can you see there you start to get a really nice corner to your lantern. So then I'm going to go round to the next one. Keeping it flat is easiest. Just pop your glue on another triangle, like so. Keep them both folded in. Because now it's starting to take shape, you won't be able to fold it flat. If you come in from inside, can you see them there together? You just pinch them together like so, and just keep them folded upwards, you get more control. Okay, and just hold them there together. Okay, then I'm around to my next one, so just try and keep them facing inwards. It does get a bit fiddly, it's not hard, it's just, you know, you just have to take some time with it. It's all about getting those lines, or all, all, all your score lines all meeting up. So again, put your hand inside, and then you can kind of bring them down and they join nicely. And that's what you want to get. See, I've got nice joins on all of the corners there. And then once we put all this together in a minute, I mean, you can stick that as you go, but I think just working stages will kind of work your way up. And then with the last one, just, you know, it might be hard for you to get your glue right the way in, but if you just kind of put a bead of it at least on that end bit, on the, sorry, on the join. See, I've just put it there. That'll be enough to stick them together like so okay so that's now what you should have and then this bit here like the little chimney again keep one of your hands inside it makes it much much easier but if you just kind of pull them all out and make sure the tabs are all folded inwards so all my tabs you can see there 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 they're all inside and again just stick them down so just pull it out add your glue and then just slide that one in and again it should all perfectly line up like so. All right, so just go around and get them all stuck down. Okay, so now you can see a gorgeous lantern we've got coming together. Now it's entirely up to you whether you want to add glue onto this piece or glue onto this piece. I'm going to add it on my tray, but it doesn't really matter. But this one inch score line is really kind of a guideline because that whole piece, so if we just bring it up, bring your tray in, and if you kind of just pinch See, like pinch the sides like that, pop in one side, pinch in those and pop it in and you should have a really nice snug fit. Don't worry if it's bowing slightly because once your glue's there, see that's going to stick and each of those is a perfect fit, okay? So I'm going to grab my glue and again you don't need loads but because I'm not going to be carrying it with the by the handle or anything, it's, but you obviously don't want it coming out. But you can see there but just go around and pop your glue on all of the four sides because you need to do this all in one go okay so that's all my glue 
and like I said, pinch one side. If you've got a preference to it that you know you might have, I don't know, just made a mistake or something might not look the right way, make sure, because obviously this is the front and that's the back, you've got whatever bit it is facing the right way. And just go along and just stick it all down. Okay, so there it is. And that now has made that really, really strong. It's solid, solid structure. So now just the final details, so the little bits of decoration. So like I said, I've already done this, and this is going to stick on the front right there. Oh, it looks so pretty. This, this is what does it. This is, <laughs> as soon as I made this and put it on, I was there going, oh my God, <gasps> I love it, I love it. So I'm going to run a bead of hot glue, because I don't want this coming off. And just sit that on there, make sure it's nice and straight. Obviously you might want to put a little message on this, you might want to, you know, to, it to read Merry Christmas. It's entirely up to you how you want to decorate. But we have, my mum actually has the one that I, we've got my granddad's and then my mum and dad have an antique one. We've got two antique oil lanterns and one was my grandfather's that he used to use to walk to work when he was a young boy. And um, it's so heavy for me to bring out to China. What I keep saying I will one day, but it looks really nice by my mum's fireplace and I don't have a fireplace. So um, yeah, I wanted a lantern, so I've made these. <laughs> and there we go. How pretty does that look? And then I've got this piece here, and then I've got another half by 12, and this is gonna go and decorate the top. So all you wanna do, First of all, we're going to do this strip, so I'm just going to put some glue, just no more than half an inch on all four sides, like so. And then, where's my little lid? Ooh. And then starting from the back, because that's where I want the join to be, I'm just going to stick it like so. And then just wrap it around each of your corners, hugging the top. You want it to stay nice and flush with the top of the little kind of chimney there, the funnel. And then when you get back round to the join, let it overlap and then just trim it like so. And then I can pop some more glue on there and I'll pop it on there then. Again, you don't need to worry about scoring it, like so. You might want to put cover these complete squares or black, so the whole piece is a little black kind of chimney, but I quite like just that top. Then this is that other 12 by half an inch that I mentioned, and I've finished the ends here. I've had these for ages. They are stamping up, they're heavy, they're metal um, embellishments, but they look like little bolts. You've got little screws here. And that's what I've used, so I've put a screw on the end of each of these. So you can see they're just little stickers. Brad's, metal brads would look just, just as nice. But I liked the thought of a little bit of hardware on this. So I'm just going to then cover about half inch by half inch there of glue. And then just stick it in the middle of one of the sides, just like that. Okay. It needs to stick down there. There we go. So just do that again on the other side. And there you go, there's those finished. How lovely does that look? So like I said, you can hold it with that, but you, you know, I'm not gonna be doing it. It's just purely there for, you know, decorative reasons. But I absolutely adore this. You've seen how it works, so I'm not gonna pop the candles back in that one. But I'm so excited. I've only got a month to wait and then I can put this all up. <laughs> I'm not allowed to put the tree up any earlier than the 1st of December. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I have had so much fun making these and I really hope you do too. And as always, if you do, please share your versions over on Mixed Up Crafters Facebook group because I would love to see different variations of this design. I think it would look wicked and I absolutely love these. So thank you for stopping by. Hope you've enjoyed today. Please give it a thumbs up if you have and I'll be back again soon with another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye!